The massive choice of musical equipment today is brilliant, but for newcomers and intermediates, choosing from the vast range of hardware and software for music is daunting to say the least. If I were starting today, I think I would end up getting lost in gear lust. That is something that you have to avoid at all costs. I'm quite convinced a lot of music careers or potential music careers are ruined by gear lust, so avoid that. So I decided with only a thousand pound budget, could I build a state of the art studio? The answer is yes. Couple of little provisions. This is a studio or setup aimed at somebody looking to make electronic music. If you were looking to record drums and guitars and live bands and all that, that's a different setup you're going to need and it's going to be a bit more expensive. I'm also assuming you have a computer, so if you have a computer and a grand, you're good to go. Let's check out the list. First up is the M Audio M Track 2x2M. This is a 2 in, 2 out audio interface, it also has built-in MIDI. The two inputs at the front are basically DI. Uh, you can plug a guitar or bass straight into them. Very handy, so it's really a DI box. You wouldn't need a preamp or anything, you can just plug direct in. At the back, it doesn't, there's no image at the back, unfortunately. You've got two XLR, <coughs> two XLR inputs there, as well as um, they double up as line inputs, so this is where you would plug your synth, uh, external synth, hardware synth, drum machine into. Like I mentioned, it's got the built-in MIDI, it does up to 182 kilohertz sampling, which you will never be using, by the way. Obviously 24-bit, latency-free monitoring, you would just turn this knob here, around to direct. That's kind of standard stuff. 48 volt phantom power, if you're using a condenser mic. And really, a, a very good interface. I like how the look of it, the build quality is very good. And the big knob, it might not seem important, but that big knob is going to be your main volume control. And you're going to be using that a lot. But also, I believe this doubles up as a MIDI controller. So, for the features you get with this thing, plus the look, it, it does kind of look very good. And I think it, the quality is pretty decent, actually. It's a bargain for the price. So that's the first thing in your list would be the M-Track 2x2M audio MIDI interface and preamp and DI box and main volume controller and a bit of a MIDI controller. So next up, you're gonna need monitors. So after looking around, basically three hours last night, I was looking at monitors, these come up. The reviews I read were very good, uh, Sound on Sound gave it a very good review. I know that Sound on Sound don't do this unless it is actually really good. I think he's right enough when he says that speakers costing more than double the price are just don't really compete. I've never used them myself but I will be buying a set just for something else to check mixes on. I really like that, uh, oh we can't see the back, oh we, we can see the back, you've got, uh, you know, you can basically add some top end, bottom end, you can tailor the sound a little bit to your room, handy. Multiple forms of inputs, they're obviously powered, again, in my opinion, for what you're getting here, on even a headphone socket in the front, bargain. Now you're going to want a set of headphones. The AKG 702s, now there are tons of headphones out there, I couldn't spend days looking at them, but these ones seem to come up quite often in discussions, uh, Gear Sluts, various other forums, read some reviews. They're obviously not going to compete with a set of headphones at a grand, but from what I can tell, the build quality, the frequency response, you're going to be able to do mixes through these. Now the reason I'm adding in headphones, now you don't have to, if you're someone that will be perfectly happy just to use monitors, you don't need to buy the headphones, or vice versa. If you're someone who would prefer to just use headphones, which I personally couldn't do, but each to their own, you won't go far wrong with these. So if you only wanted the headphones or the speakers, that would actually free up some money. I don't know, you can have a night out with a girlfriend. 
I would recommend you get both this way. You've got a really good system there for checking your mixes. If it sounds good through the speakers and sounds good through the headphones, you're good to go. Both headphones and speakers are quality. I would never have gotten anything like this 25 years ago. This kind of quality. For that kind of money, no chance. Right, so now we're going on to, because it's a hybrid hardware software system, your first synth, basically this, or the Neutron. If I had to choose, the only reason I would choose, because both of these synths are perfectly capable, this to me sounds like a Model D, the Moog Model D. I could, can't tell the difference. And that's the truth. I'm not just saying that. And I don't own one of these. I do plan on getting one someday. I'll probably end up getting both of them. But uh, this will be my first one. The only reason I, I'm going for this one first is because the Neutron will lead me down a path of heavy duty investigation and experimentation. Now, if you're a newcomer, I think all this stuff is really great, but the purpose is you're, you want to write music and finish songs. So this is why uh, there are no modular bits of gear in the mutant recommendation. But I've put the Neutron in there because I think either of these two monos are perfectly adequate for your needs. Uh, they're more than adequate, actually. They are both fantastic. Three oscillators, you can do all that chordy stuff by changing the notes of each os os oscillator, changing the pitch. And this is basically a Model D. You're literally going to be owning a, a Model D for a, just over 280 quid, I think it is. Absolute bargain, both of them. So take your pick with those, but bear in mind this section here, uh, you're going to end up spending a lot of time here but you're either a beginner or intermediate and this can lead you down a rabbit hole that can be very deep and difficult to, to get out of. I mean, I know a few people that have gone down the modular route 20 grand later. I myself have not gone down a, that route precisely for that reason. Right, so that's your mono analog synth. The point of the hybrid setup is to also include an analog element to your state-of-the-art studio, which it is. Right, so we've done that. So the next thing, we're looking at some kind of drum element. So, well, the Volca Beats. This is an analog drum machine. Now, if it, if it was only that, I would reject it because, like, the analog snare, that it's that 808, 606 type snare, personally, I think they've been done to death. Um, most analog drum machines seem to have this type of sound. I think I know the reasons why, but that's for another video. But this is a great drum machine. Obviously, it's got the analog sounds, but it, it also comes installed with PCM sounds, samples. So giving you a, fr a few different flavors, which I think you need. Like I have uh, Electron Analog Rhythm, and the analog sounds are fine. But I only use them very occasionally because sometimes it, for what I do, I need stuff to cut through a bit more. So I'll mix with samples and lots of EQing and stuff to, to get the right sound. But So if it was just the analog drum sounds, I probably wouldn't own that drum machine. And if I didn't own the analog 4, I would own this. Or I would go for the Volca sample. That's the other thing about this. It's not just a drum machine. It's a... It's a sa uh, not a sampler, it's a, it has its own sequencer. You can record some of the knobs into the sequencer. So you can do a lot with this. It's a, it's a small unit, a bit plasticky, but it sounds fantastic for the money. And it really is uh, amazing value for what you get here. Real analog sounds created with reference. Okay, maximum, blah, blah, blah. PC yeah, the, this section here, the PCM sound uh, engine expands possibilities, yes. And this is why, if it didn't have that, I wouldn't be recommending it, because the analog only sounds could be a bit limiting. You could be a drum and bass guy, a heavy duty techno guy, and that little 808 style snare might not be too suitable, but you're gonna find something in the PCM samples that you can mix in there. And the other good thing about this gear is if you really start liking this, uh, the, the Volca range, 
there's a little mixer you can get for the, it's like a performance mixer and it's actually very good what you can do if you've got a few of these units and they all sync up perfectly well and they're very tight as well when they're synced up so that's another plus point if you didn't want the Volca Beats you could replace it for the Volca Sample the advantage here you can obviously sample in little bass sounds, little chord hits and sequence them up you're the master of the sound with this thing what you put into it is what you get but to get sounds into it, it doesn't have, as far as I know, it doesn't have a little flash card. You have to use an app. So either or, if I, if me personally, if I had to choose, I would be going for the Volca sample. But bear in mind, I have a lot of experience sampling sounds and I've been doing it for basically 30 years. And I have these kind of sounds anyway and this kind of functionality in the analog rhythm, the electron analog rhythm that I own. So it would be me, if it was just me, I would be going for this. Because in my mind anyway, you can sound like anything you want with a sampler. With a sampler, you're the chameleon guy. So that's your drums covered. Now we need, we need something else though. We need a polyphonic synth. So there we go. The Volca Keys. Great little synth. It's only three note polyphonic. But... There is only so much you can do with a mono synth. You can obviously, by detuning the oscillators, you can get a chord type thing going. But this will allow you to play actual chords. So just three note, I get that. That's a little bit more limiting than a six note chord, but I think you would be very surprised. I've checked out a lot of videos and I think the sound of this thing is fantastic. Fully analog. And it's just, it's just fantastic for the money. A lot of things you can do with that. So with this, your drums and your mono, you're really kind of covered with the analog uh, section of your sound palette. So far, we're covered with the what is it? The interface, the head, uh, the speakers, the headphones, the mono analog, the analog drums or not analog drums, whatever you want the analog polysynth. Moving on, you're going to need a DAW. I've recommended Ableton Live, the starter version, which they call Intro. Um, I, but I'm just recommending Ableton Live because it's relatively easy to get into if you're a beginner, and the functionality is pretty good and it's a very clean interface and it's very stable. They're all very stable, but Ableton Live, I have to commend them for their stability. I very rarely crash that software, like maybe twice a year if that. My only complaint with this, they're a bit stingy with the, uh, you know, this is their en entry level, which is around £80. Audio MIDI tracks. Now, I hope that's 16 each. If that's 16, uh, only 8 audio and 8 MIDI, very, very stingy. You can live with the 8 scenes, that's okay. Send the returns, you can live with that. Audio inputs 4, that's fine. Audio outputs 4, you'll only be using 2, and you're only ever going to use 2 inputs at the same time with your interface. That's the DAW I'm recommending if you were going to buy one. But I would also recommend you have a look at Steinberg's Cubase entry level. It was Cubase's, Cubase Lite. I don't know what it is now, but I do know they're a bit less stingy than Ableton. And it's a Cubase, I use it. I use Cubase and Ableton Live and Pro Tools. I would recommend any of them. But so definitely check out the entry level Cubase. Or perhaps you're on a Mac then Logic isn't bad, but I think for beginners, I think Logic is very complex. You know, Pro Tools is more for like a linear type recording. That's like, you know, left to right recording. Ableton is kind of geared up for clip view, session view, which is kind of pattern based, you know. It does have the linear section when you come to a range, but it's not as advanced as something like Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic. So. The DAW is a difficult one. It's really up to you what you prefer. You kind of need to go and have a look at that. But the Cubase starter version intro is within the price range. Moving on, you're going to need a keyboard, a MIDI master keyboard to play all your new gear. 
and soft synths. Go on with the key step, the Arturia key step. It's 32 notes. The build quality is excellent. And the keys themselves, they're not the cheapest crap that you'll ever come across. They're actually quite decent. Uh, they're not exactly weighted, but there's a little bit of, uh, sort of tension there. But it's not much, but some of them are really, really bad, you know. Um, and obviously you've got the octave up and down buttons, so it's easy to fly around. But what it also has, it's got a CV out, an arpeggiator, and a polyphonic sequencer. That might not sound amazing and all that, but it's very handy. You'll have a lot of fun with this triggering your your Volca Keys or your Behringer Model D or the other one. But the polyphonic sequencer is really a lot better than I thought it would be. It's very basic, it's only 16 notes. But you just play chords, right? And then it plays them all back like really fast and there's a little button you hit for spaces when you don't want the chord playing. And you'll come up with lots of quirky accidents and that's actually what you want. So this was the reason, it, it wasn't just the build quality, it was because it had a, a, a few extra features which are very handy and it's actually a really good little keyboard. I, I enjoy using it. It doesn't take up hardly any space. So that's basically it. Now don't forget that whatever DAW you use, this is where your hybrid digital system, they all come with plugins and uh, soft synths there are no soft synths or plugins put into the £1,000 budget studio because they come with your DAW anyway. Now obviously there's tons and tons of third party stuff out there, lots and lots of VST synths that you, could, you can buy, but hold off on that because this gear, all this stuff, is going to take some time to learn and to really get to know. With all this stuff and including the plugins that come with whichever DAW you end up going for, you have a lot on your plate. But the good news is, one of the reasons I didn't recommend just a, a digital system like a DAW and some plugins is because I really believe that newcomers to the game really have to get used to using some hardware as well. I think if you start off today only using software, you're going to get into that habit and when it comes to using hardware, you might feel a little alienated. So this way you're getting used to both systems because you're going to be using both hardware and software. But I think this is an excellent little setup for under a grand as well. I could never have gotten this sort of quality. 25 years ago, not even 10 years ago, let's be honest. In my early 20s, if I had this system, the Mutant recommended system, I would be over the moon every day for 10 years. And believe me, this gear, you can make record quality with this stuff. There's absolutely no doubt about it. So that's basically it, and um, obviously you don't have to get the exact recommendations, but if you have a grand and you want to, to buy some stuff, I hope this video has been of some use, because it's an absolute minefield out there. So hopefully I've taken some of the stress, where you can spend literally five years deciding what to buy. Hopefully I've reduced some of that stress. Alright, thanks for watching.